and welcome to Emma's ESL English. So this week we're going to talk about punctuation. To be honest with you, when I was at school, I don't really remember very much in the way of grammar classes, although I know we talked about tenses. There were only three, past, present and future, which anybody who knows English knows there isn't a future tense. So <laughs> anyway, but we spent a lot of time talking about punctuation. Maybe I just like punctuation more. I don't know. Anyway, so what we're going to look at today is punctuation, but I want to look at it from two different perspectives. I want to look at it as how you're using it when you're writing. So using punctuation to help your writing be better clearer and do what you want it to do but I also want to look at it from a speaking perspective if you're having to give a speech or if you have to read a script or read something out I want you to be able to use the punctuation to make whatever you're reading sound good it's very common when I listen to students read that they don't pay attention to the punctuation which means that they struggle to know when to take a breath and how to emphasize the sentences. So what I want to show you this week is how you can use the punctuation that's written there or the punctuation that you write there to help you know when you should breathe, when you should emphasize how the sentence should flow. I hope it'll be useful. What we're using for this exercise is maybe a little silly. <laughs> I thought a few different times about what we could use for this. I didn't really want to use somebody else's writing, but I wanted to give you a variety of different kinds of punctuation to look over during the course of the week. So what I've done is taken actually, uh, <laughs> it's actually a review that I wrote for a TV show that I just finished watching. The TV show is a Korean drama called Why Her. Anybody who loves Korean dramas will probably have heard of it. It's very, very good. And so what I want to do is use this review that I wrote to demonstrate the bits that I'm going to show you. First of all, I'm going to read my review and try and read it without the punctuation. I'm going to try and keep reading as if there's no punctuation there at all, and I'll just take a breath when I run out of breath. And then I'm going to read it with the full stops that I have put in there. And then tomorrow I'm going to read it with the commas that I've put in there. And then on Thursday I'll read it with the whole punctuation. And on each day we can talk about those different bits of punctuation that I have used and added and what they're giving us. Okay, so first day, today, we're on full stops. Let me read this through. It's gonna sound, <laughs> eh, not so great. Okay. Also, please forgive, I was really enthusiastic about this show. I literally just finished watching it. It was very, very exciting. Epic. This show is gripping. From start to finish, there are new twists and turns. The bad guy is really super bad and so good at it, and the main lead is spectacular. She is flawed. She has regrets and she is bad, but she is so strong. She gathers skills, knowledge. She gets smarter with each knock she takes, and despite all the people, mostly men, who are trying to put her in her place, use her, mislead her, and frame her, she wins. Surrounding her are a cast of delightful misfits, enthusiastic first-year law students who are about to get a better education than they ever bargained for, and three convicted men who banded together and built a little restaurant empire despite their rocky start. The male lead has an incredibly engaging background filled with secrets and mystery, and he is hopelessly devoted to the attorney who believed in him. He trusts her entirely, he trusts himself entirely too, and he believes in both of them. His strength Honesty, pure heart, and intelligence cause our female lead to start looking at her life differently, to start wanting better. When she gets angry, she gets strong, and she is a delight to watch. You will start reading for her, and she won't disappoint. The plot leaves no holes and is tight and clever. The story builds, the level of corruption escalates, and the games get more dangerous and risky. It's an edge-of-your-seat drama you'll have trouble putting down. Don't expect to leave your house until it's done. It's really that good. Enjoy! Woo! That 
was not very easy and it was probably way too fast for everybody. My bad. Sorry about that. It's not very easy to read like that. <laughs> anyway, moving on. So what we want to look at are the full stops. When we're writing, we use our full stop to enclose a clause or sometimes two clauses. We want to keep our main point within that sentence. And if you're writing for the internet, for a blog online, then you'll usually find that the sentences are shorter than in other places. So if you, for example, compare, let's say, Harry Potter from last week with a blog from somewhere online, you'll probably find that the sentences in Harry Potter are much longer than the sentences on the blog. We usually want blogs to be peppy, more engaging, and they last a shorter time. So to keep people more engaged, we're using shorter sentences. Think about what you're writing and what is the goal of what you're writing, and that should determine how you write. If you are writing for work or writing emails, then think about how would you say that. Your sentence should be comfortable for you to say in less than one breath. If you read that out to yourself, read it aloud, if you read your email out to yourself and it sounds a lot like what I just read, you need to start again. <laughs> Go back to the drawing board, look at your email, read it through, decide where are the important points, where do you need to take a break, where are you finishing an idea, and where are you starting a new idea. And those are the kind of places where you're going to put your full stops. This is probably no different to your language, but if you try and translate directly from your language into English, then you might find that it doesn't translate particularly easily and then your sentences might get too long. Because often you're trying to translate an idea, it's not so easy to translate and you end up making your sentences really, really long. So we have to figure out how can you say the same thing but in a more concise way. Otherwise, you're going to lose your audience. Let me read the article again. This time I'm going to put the full stops, but I'm not going to put any of the other punctuation. Oh, this is going to be hard. And let's see how different it sounds. Actually, I should also give you a heads up. There are also exclamation points in this. So what I'm going to do is not just the full stops. I will put in all of the end of sentences, which are full stops and exclamation points. Okay, ready. Epic. This show is gripping. From start to finish, there are new twists and turns. The main bad guy is really super bad and so good at it, and the main lead is spectacular. She is flawed. She has regrets and she is bad, but she is so strong. She gathers skills, knowledge. She gets smarter with each knock she takes. And despite all the people, mostly men, who are trying to put her in her place, use her, mislead her, frame her, she wins. Surrounding her are a cast full of misfits, enthusiastic first-year students who are about to get a better education than they ever bargained for, and three convicted men who banded together and built a little restaurant empire despite their rocky start. The male lead has an incredibly engaging background filled with secrets and mystery, and he is hopelessly devoted to the attorney who believed in him. He trusts her entirely. He trusts himself entirely, too, and he believes in them both. His strength, honesty, pure heart, and intelligence cause our female lead to start looking at her life differently and start to want to be better. When she gets angry, she gets strong, and she's a delight to watch. She'll start rooting for her, and she won't disappoint. The plot leaves no holes and is tight and clever. As the story builds, the level of corruption escalates, and the games get more dangerous and risky. It's an edge-of-your-seat drama, and you'll have trouble putting it down. Don't expect to leave your house until it's done. It's really that good. Enjoy. I'm sure you guys could hear the difference. There are obvious pauses when I speak. Each of those pauses is either an exclamation point or a full stop. 
So whenever you're reading something, look for those punctuation points. That full stop tells you, stop, breathe here. And what you'll find is if you pay attention to that full stop and you take your breath, not only will you be able to read for longer, but your reading will sound better. It will be easier for other people to understand because you will slow down. And also you'll be able to put emphasis in better places. Okay, I hope you could understand from there why I chose those points to put the full stop. Today I'll put out a blog and you can go have a look at the blog and see if you can figure out what punctuation should go where. Okay, it's a little test for you. You need to look for exclamation points, full stops, brackets, and commas. There is also a semicolon in there. I think that's about everything. See if you can figure it out. Don't panic if you can't. Tomorrow we'll look at the commas and then we'll look at the whole thing on Thursday. It's not a test that you need to pass. <laughs> Don't panic. But I think it is a good opportunity for you to try and figure out where these full stops and commas go. And also think about your own writing. When you're looking at your writing this week, think about where would you breathe? How would you read this if you had to read it out loud? How can you make it better? I hope this is going to be useful for you. I'm kind of excited about it because I really like punctuation way more than a person should. If you have any questions, please drop me an email at emmaslenglish at gmail.com or alternatively you can leave some comments under the blog and I will see y'all tomorrow. Have a great day. Bye.